While it might not sell in anything like the numbers it used to, the Mondeo is still an important car for Ford, which is why the latest hatchback has now been joined by this estate. Indeed, where the Mondeo once reigned supreme, it is now Ford's smaller cars that top the UK sales charts. Capable as the Fiesta and Focus might be, they of course can't match this big wagon when it comes to space. And this is where it gets interesting. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first had a look in the boot of this new Mondeo estate, it wasn't quite as enormous as I was expecting. And it's not just me, our cameraman Dave, who owns one of the previous generation Mondeos, said exactly the same thing. Sure enough, if you load only to the parcel shelf, the boot of this estate is actually smaller than you get in a Mondeo hatchback. What's more, if you opt for either a full-size spare wheel or, as we've got here, a space saver spare wheel, boot space is reduced further still. So to benefit from a Mondeo estate, you really have to load up to the roof. And unlike in some rivals, you don't get little levers or switches here to drop the rear seats flat. Instead, you have to go round to the sides. Not only that, but the Passat Estate also comfortably beats the Mondeo for space, whether the seats are up or down. As far as complaints about Mondeo size goes, that's it. As you can see, here in the back, there's room for three adults to sit across. Lots of leg room, plenty of head room. You get more in the estate than you do in the hatchback and you can even have the panoramic glass roof without it eating into headroom too much. And another neat touch are these rear seat belts have airbags in them. Clever. There's also ample room in the front, although we remain to be convinced by this latest Mondeo's dashboard with its fiddly touchscreen and below par materials. From behind the wheel, this feels like a big car. And I mean that both as a compliment in the fact there's lots of space, it feels very roomy, but also a bit of a complaint because it is quite hard to place, particularly on narrow roads. It also means that you need to pick your parking spaces carefully, not to mention specify the optional parking sensors front and rear. All credit to Ford then for making such a big car drive so beautifully. This is the 2.0-litre diesel model, and it's quite a quiet engine. It's certainly quieter than you get in a Volkswagen Passat. Road noise is also well suppressed, and there's not much wind noise either, so it's a very good car for doing long journeys. Throw in a smooth ride, even when the Mondeo is on 19-inch wheels like this particular car, and you have a great all-rounder. And not only that, it's also really good on twisting country roads, where the body control is very good and the steering precise and well-weighted. Mondeos have always been good in this regard, and although not quite as sharp as its predecessors, this latest version is still a cut above the opposition. Throw in a fuel economy of up to 74 miles per gallon for the 1.6 diesel, or 67 miles per gallon for this 2-litre model, and you've got a fairly compelling argument for choosing the Ford. Insurance and servicing costs are in line with the competition, although Ford's three-year warranty isn't a match for the five years of cover you would get on a Hyundai i40 Tora, and nor will the Mondeo's residual values match those of its German rivals. Add these little niggles together, along with the fact that the estate carries a £1,250 premium over a Mondeo hatchback, and it actually becomes quite a difficult car to justify. The fact is, if you want a Mondeo, the hatchback is a better car. And if you want an estate, a Volkswagen Passat is both classier and bigger. Click up here to subscribe to our YouTube channel and you can read full reviews of the Mondeo estate, the Passat estate and many other cars, estates and otherwise by going to the Telegraph Cars website up here.